before, I'll come back and work. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I have to ask you though, I mean, uh, Seeing Milan Soman there on the show brought back many memories. I remember as a kid, you know, when we were in college, staying up at late at night to watch a mouthful of sky only because of Milan Soman. So tell me, is he as good looking in real life as he's on camera? You know, I've known him for a few years now, Gayatri, and I really don't see what the fuss is about. I mean, he's a sweet guy, uh, <laughs> but it, you know, he's just another actor for me. So I. I, yeah, I can't look beyond the fact that he's another actor for me. But yeah, I'm glad that, you know, the audiences react the way they do. It's good for me. <laughs> I, I, I'm having my fangirl moment here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have to say, I mean, Mumbai police ended up making a meme on your show. Yes. They used the tagline that, you know, the safest city in the world. Yes. You had a whole article in New York Times calling it the Desi version of Sex in the City. So do you like this comparison? No, I don't actually. I don't. Uh, but having said that, I think that because it's the only show in a sense in a long while that has celebrated female friendship uh, with four single women uh, in a metropolis in India and women who are fashion forward. So I think that uh, it's, you know, it gets compared. Having said that the stories, the trajectories of the women are totally different. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I can do nothing about it. Once I make something and I put it out there, now, now everybody gets to react the way they want to and I have to take it, good or bad. But you don't really like the comparison because not Sex in the City, yeah? This is... I mean, I loved Sex in the City when it came out, you know? I mean, we used to take those DVDs from Shemaru and all and we used to watch all seasons. So, uh, You've also said in an interview that uh, Pomo Shots Please celebrates life and all its ugly, comfortable, messy glory. Would you like to elaborate on that? I mean, it, it kind of, my answer kind of goes back to, I think, one of the first questions that you asked me, why flawed? And we've not sort of held back on showing the mess in women's lives, emotional mess or personal mess or whatever mess it might be, you know, whether it's... Uh, um, uh, dealing with uh, your family or the men in your life or the conflicts at work. You know, we, we don't, we are not apologizing for them. We are putting them out there. We are not treating men like, oh, the, you know, you know, uh, uh, we're going to, yeah, they're not, they're not villains either. So, you know, I mean, if the women make a mistake, we put it out there, you know, yes, women do make mistakes and this is it, you know. But how do they then get up and they walk again? That is the strength. That is the resilience. So therefore, it's messy, you know, uh, and it's there, you know, there are no apologies for it. Do you have a favorite character from the show? Any of the four? Can you ever ask a mother who's your favorite child? No. <laughs> Maybe you have a soft spot for Damni Rizvi Roy, you know, the journalist whose creativity is curtailed. Because she's anti-establishment. I mean, of course, definitely one feels for that, you know, because in a, in a creative scenario, I mean, we're, I'm in the creative field and one feels we already do self-censorship in a sense, in any way, you know, in any case, while writing, while directing, while editing, you know, you have that in mind. Am I going to be annoying somebody enough to put a ban on my show? You know, you're constantly, you know, that's always there at the back of your mind. So, of course. You know, and uh, uh, we've had so many journalists and so many writers whose works have been banned. And it was something that we all felt, the creators, the writers, and I, we felt very strongly about it. Yeah. So, uh, so we, yeah, so we put it in the show. Yeah, I, I like that segment there where she's giving it back to the troll when she's going to, yeah. Put the <laughs> There's also a lot of, uh, I mean, criticism from different quarters that, you know, I mean, a show like this, why are modern, liberated women always shown to be, you know, just smoking and drinking and, you know, lots of easy sex? Is that what it's all about? Do they go hand in hand? No, of course. It's, I'm glad you asked me this question so I can put to rest all my, uh, you know, every time I get asked this question. So in the entire, so the, the, I have two, three responses to this. You know, historically, 
Indian women were said to be, you know, Bharatiya Nari was supposed to be in an X kind of way. And therefore, slowly over the years, things like drinking and smoking became a way of rebelling and becoming ki, achha, ye to bhoat tez ladki hai. You know, when I was growing up, people used to say, suna jata tha na, ye ladki badi tez hai. She's very fast. You know, which meant smoking and drinking. But why, how did smoking and drinking become uh, uh, become a symbol for feminism. It shouldn't be. Would we be asking this question today if there were four male friends who went out and drank at a bar once in two months or once every week? Would we be saying, hey, why do they smoke and drink so much? First of all, nobody's uh, smoking in the show except for one scene, I think, where Davini's rolling a cigarette. So there's nobody smoking in the show because I'm quite an anti-smoker myself. Having said that, today in uh, urban cities, women are going out and uh, drinking. They do go to bars on their own. And I think somewhere it was trying to normalize that factor and not confuse it with, and say that these are girls now without judgment. You know, you see them without judgment. Don't judge them because they are smoking and because they are drinking, you know. I mean, and for people to reduce the show to, oh, they're just drinking, they're always drinking. I feel really, really is sad because, and this comes from a lot of men, actually. Yeah. Um, you know. And easy sex. What is easy sex? You know, when, you, when you're talking about women, you're getting into the heads and the hearts of women. Yes, we are going to explore their sexuality as well. Right? As makers. Now, throughout on screen, for a long time, we've been seeing women having had sex done to them. You know, they've been the passive receptors of it. Yeah. And we wanted to show them saying that, yeah, our orgasm is also important. You know? And I think that somewhere it's a bit difficult for people to digest. And I think that we tend to sometimes reject things that we are uncomfortable with socially or emotionally or, uh, you know. And, it, and so if, if I take each character, for example, Damini has, I've just said Damini has a friends with benefit relationship with, uh, with, Bar, with Dr. Varsi. Um, and she's in a complicated scenario with Jay, right? So there are these two men in her life and she's constantly, you know, trying to figure out what her deal is with them. Poor Umang doesn't even have any sex in the show till, till she takes Samara to, you know, and she's pretty monogamous. She's completely monogamous. She's going to get married to Samara at the end of the show. And of course, that doesn't pan out for other reasons. And then there's Anjana, who's, who breaks off with her uh, past relationship from season one and then gets into something with with her colleague who happens to be married. Now, and Siddhi who has a drunken encounter in Turkey, which many people may have had, not in Turkey, but elsewhere, you know, in your mis misbegotten youth, you know, one makes mistakes. And then she gets into a relationship with Amit, the stand-up comedian. And for, and for her, you know, for her, it's, a, it's just a hookup and the sex isn't good. And she's like, but can I, is this, you know, so she's admitting the fact that she's being shallow and judging him for that because he's actually a really nice guy. So what we're saying is we're not judging these women for their sexual preferences or whatever, but we're just putting it out there because it is a norm. It is, you know, we, for women today to go out there to have sex, it is normal. You know, it, it is not, what is not normal is that we don't, is seeing it on screen. And that's why I think people were taken like, oh my God, you know, because Siddhi says, uh, you know, shit, yeah, he just has one routine and, you know, and she doesn't, you know, and she doesn't have an orgasm and she wants, so she's, so it, it's time that women saw themselves on screen saying, yes, sex is important for us as well, not just for the guy. So I think, I think um, that's what a lot of men find like, you know, like, oh my God. It's like an oh my god moment. Ki ye to hoi nahi se. Ye, this is not feminism. But what is feminism? Feminism is pluralistic, right? There are kinds and kinds of feminism. What if these same women were in, uh, in uh, Muzaffargarh and they were stepping out, stealing out, you know, of their houses and finding a quiet place to drink and talk about guys, it would be like, wow. You know, but now because these, age, these women have agency, these, these women are... They have kinship and, you know, and they can actually just walk into a bar and have a drink. So I think men find it very, you know, uh, it, it kind of bothers them. And I think that some of us women have bought into this patriarchy so much that some of us also feel ki, oh shit, is this, is, but the thing is the show is so much more than just these women either drinking 
or having sex because that is actually if i count the number of minutes in 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 10 episodes it may come to like 4 minutes you know literally 4 minutes or over over 10 episodes so it's sad when it's reduced to that because the show is so much more about that so much more than that you know it's about misogyny casual misogyny at work which we explored so much creative freedom uh, you know in a place where, in a scenario which is uh, so hard to do you know if you're anti establishment it's yeah. about how you kind of you're always in any relationship you're looking for that balance you know uh, and respect which umang ultimately realizes she's not getting even in a same sex relationship so the idea was to a normalize the same sex relationship and then say that they also have the same issues that happen in a heterosexual relationship she finds that she's not getting that equality and she's saying that I came from this way, I mean, from home, because I have seen all of my life that one has listened and the other has listened. And now if I find myself in the same spot, I can't have it. And she runs away from the wedding. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and to Siddhi too, you know, when she says that, yeah, now I'm a man, how can I become a girlfriend? So it's a lot about finding yourself and I think that a lot of my work throughout, throughout has been really about or some kind of a search for self and an acceptance, not just from other people or whatever, but mostly from your own self, mm-hmm. you know, and I, th- and I find that I subconsciously and unconsciously, these are threads that have been there through my, through my uh, work. From Hippie Pure to Mahi Way to Mutsir Friendship, Mutsir Friendship Karoge. Yes. <laughs> Romil and Jugal and Beva Kufia. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So what are you trying to say is that the sexual life of these ladies is just a facet of their life is a part of their life it doesn't define them because there are many different aspects they have their professional life they have their own relationships their own problems and therefore shouldn't be viewed through the narrow prism of you know easy sex and just drinking not at all not at all i mean that's that's it's sad if it is i mean there's so much more to the show yeah so we'll take some audience questions here because this is one question you know which is a lot of people were saying Kriti Kolesh, can we have you? Would you like to ask your question now? You could Do I have to, guys? Three. I, I thought I'd posted it there. Yeah. So, no, while, uh, go ahead. She, she's joining us from Australia, Nubur. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Nice to meet you. Um, I said to Gayathri I would I would join this call because I was very interested um, in your show and it is 9 o'clock so I should be in bed because I'm a good feminist, right? So anyway, um, I really loved your show, but I also equally loathed it partly because of the sex and the city comparison. I felt that was just a little bit too twee, if you know what I mean. Um, I just think you have such an amazing opportunity, I think, to impact on the male gaze in India and the Indian male gaze internationally. And, and I think to be able to do that through something that is so widely watched is, you know, if there's an opportunity to consider that, that would be a really interesting experiment for someone like me who is deeply into, um, you know, seeing women in their full dimension, not just as mother, wife, daughter, etc., but far more co- complex creatures, you know, so I'm, you know, I've pretty much paved my own path, um, even though I'm a labelled an NRI, so married, divorced, stand on my own two feet, have two biracial daughters, um, you know, essentially a prototype to what you're doing here. But the thing that still bugs me to this day, be it in, in corporate Australia, be it in the UK, the US, it's that Indian male gaze and that stereotyping of women be it Indian or non, around mother, wife, sister, daughter. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity to explore that through this show. Well, I think that we've pretty much explored them as women and not just as um, daughters or girlfriends or mothers, uh, because Anjana's life does go beyond her daughter. Uh, and I think we've tried to do that. I mean, I had a pretty, I mean, I had a pretty much a female crew on it, female writers, female creators, you know, um, my editor. So I think that there was hard, there was no male gaze on this show, really. There was no male gaze on this show. And I think that it's, uh, uh, we tried to stay true to everything that we believed in. 
but having said that you know it's very hard to please everybody and uh, uh, you know and i just think that it's great that there's so much conversation around the show good or bad you know i mean um, oh that's fantastic absolutely i think it started a conversation that needed to ha- happen right and I think great job yeah. in indian feminism you know i mean uh, mm. i was watching the show called mrs america on hotstar which is about the era uh and gloria steinem uh, uh shirley chisholm and uh, um betty friedan and all of the all of those feminists who who written very seminal works and they were constantly fighting amongst themselves about what feminism was so when i saw that i was like theek hai yaar main kaun hu yaar main kya cheez hu it's okay if people are you know fighting and arguing about about my show i think it's great you know so yeah. uh, i think just having a conversation about these issues in india i mean just getting con- getting the conversation started i have to tell you my 18 year old and her friends they just loved the show everyone binged to watch it and they were like why is never looked so cool before and so and i have no problem to tell you so when i mentioned that you know i knew you i said i know the director of the show wow wow you have a friend who's so liberal who's so progressive suddenly these girls were seeing me in a new light she, she must be very thoughtful to make this because you know <laughs> so i had to tell you that no for i think let's change tracks here and uh, we'll move on to the next segment and uh, Nupur, you were born in Faisalabad. Happy to answer anything else on Pomo Shops if anybody adds anything, you know. Yeah, we'll take this towards the end of the conversation. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so we go back to your journey. You were born in Faisalabad, in UP. Yeah. Where all what is happening right now? I was born there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you say you you're a true Indian. You've lived in most of India. Yeah. You've lived in Calcutta, Hyderabad, Delhi, Bombay. Yeah, I'm a true Indian. I've lived in all four corners, north, south, east, west. Yeah. How did it come? And so, so I mean, and then you went to Delhi for your graduation. You were at LSR. You did English literature, and then you moved to Bombay to SCM. Yes, yes to do my post graduation in mass communication. Mass communication, and then you worked with Ketan Mehta. Yes, who made Mirch Masala. Yeah, but Mirch not Masala. way before I joined him, though. Yeah, Mirch Masala was before that, and he made Holi also before that. That was his first film. Ah, oh, sorry, second, second film. Yeah. But your first independent project was uh, Hippy Pure. Yeah. Which was a uh, coming of age of high school students. ZTV, nineteen ninety eight, and then there was Mahi Vela. Like you were saying again, questions of identity, overweight girl, trying to look for love and life, and then the twenty eleven would say friendship karoge. Is that the right way of saying? Yeah. Okay. That was also, I mean, that was also uh, sort of uh, with young people in college, and that was really about, uh, you know, Facebook had just come in like three day, three years before that, and uh, there was this whole thing of, uh, you know, uh, the tussle between your online identity and your and your real self, and then how you can, you know, people posing as somebody else. Yeah. Online, and so you know, kind of explored that in a romantic comedy kind of format. Yeah. But I mean, those are issues which are even I mean so topical today because I think the social media is making this present felt even more. So it was a lot. Take it till you make it. Take it till you, you make it. <laughs> take it till you make it. And uh, so all these uh, themes that you've discussed, you know, from the high school to Mahi Ve to Mujhse Friendship, is there any autobiography? Autobiographical? Auto? Any characters? Yeah. <laughs> I've got tongue tied there. Okay, okay. Character, this is some some something you uh, dealt with in your own life, and these characters, any of these characters come from there, or it's. I think one always kind of creates characters from life, from people one has seen around, and you bring a lot of your life into it, not in a direct way, but you know, oh, I, you know, I had a friend once who did, who has said such a trait, I, you know, and then you think of uh, your uh, Marcy's. husband who was like that and you know and then some trait from there finds its way into something that you're doing and so it's a you draw a lot from life so life you know it, it's great to live life because that is your kind of you know feeding ground and your that is the soil from which you're kind of going to make your characters grow and uh, i think there's always a little bit of me in every character that i uh, put on screen um 
Now, how much or whatever is just, it really depends, you know, but uh, yeah. I mean, for every director, I think that is, that could be true. Which brings me to the next question. You directed Rishi Kapoor in your 2014 film, Beba Kufia. So which character was he inspired by? The retired IAS officer finding, <laughs> trying to find an appropriate groom for the daughter. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a mix, you know, like we all had dads who've always been, uh, you know, looking for that right person for you and all of that. So, uh, yeah, but he was great fun to work with. I mean, I got scolded every day. Every <laughs> day. Why were you scolded? No, he comes from the old school where he doesn't like a mic being given to him. You know, it has a receiver, you need to put it in, it has to be pinned here and all of those things. He used to hate that now because he grew up on boom hair and then he'll go to the studio and he'll dub it. He'll dub the film. So one day, so you know, he used to get really pissed and why can't you control your sound recordist? And I'm like, sir, you have to wear it, you know. I mean, there's no way out, we're not going to be dubbing it. Either I will dub this picture or I will leave this picture, you know, he used to say things like that. And once I like, you know, I was like fully in tears and then his makeup man comes to me and say, he's laughing and he's saying, kya ho aapko? Wo karan pe bhi chillate hai. <laughs> one day I heard him shouting at my producer, Aditya Chopra, on the phone. You shut up, I'm going to do it. I said, ah, theek hai yaar, mere producer bhi chilla raha, mere pe kabhi kabhi chilla raha, to theek hai yaar, it's okay. But he used to shout and then make sure ki, nahi, mein biryani laya hon, you have to eat with me. So he used to make sure I ate lunch with him every day after getting shouted at. So, uh, you know, yeah. And he was yeah. not a no female director at all. I think Zoya had directed, uh, directed him in Luck by Chance and that was it. And uh, so the first five days, you know, he used to keep testing me. And after that, you know, once he submitted, he realized that, you know, so I was always on my toes. He, uh, uh, then once he, sub once he accepted me and he submitted entirely, like, you know, to the vision, he was fantastic. He was, how, how, how did he, I mean, uh, how did he choose to be in the film if he wasn't very comfortable with the idea of working with a female director? So my producer called him and said, there's a script, uh, mm -hmm. Mary, director Ivy, you listen to the script and see if you like it. So I, I actually went to, uh, uh, went to their RK studios over two days to read out the script to him, to narrate the script to him, egg then first half, ugly then second half. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, th I he gave my, he gave me a very good report card uh, after that to my producer. So, oh. <laughs> and he saw that you know he was not just a dad; he had a lot to do with the you know in the film in that sense. Like he was he was a protagonist. Yeah, absolutely. So he really enjoyed that. He enjoyed the screen. Then he said yes. So. And then he come around to paying you a compliment by the end of it. And yeah. yeah. You want to share that with us? He was also a filmmaker. He was he was sorry he was also a filmmaker himself. So he kind of, you know, he, he, he know, you know, I mean, well, he'll ask me, kya lens kya lagaya? And if I say hundred, that he knows that it's only his face. So he'll act accordingly. <laughs> if I say 50, yeah, 50 means like it's a mid shot or, you know, uh, or 35 means it's full lens. So, you know, he used to, like he knew it. He knew his shit, which was quite something. I mean, it's wonderful. So what did you learn from him during this interaction, during the shoot? Uh, I learned a lot of spontaneity from him, you know, because he goes by, uh, you know, his first takes used to be the best take. Like, I mean, he, he used to nail it. Like, it, it, you know, he doesn't read the script. I read the script to him initially. Ho gaya. Now, every day before the scene, I'll go and read to him. Like, his, the script will go to him. The pages for the day will go to him, but he won't read them. So, I'll go to the van. I'll read the scene. I'll tell him, iske pehle ye hua tha, iske baad ye hua tha. And then he remembers, he knows it, he comes out and he nails it in the first take. Every time I asked him for a third take, he'll ask me 10 questions. Why do you want it? So I'm trying to protect the other actors also because they have fucked up. Now, how do I tell him that they fucked up? So, you know, so I'm just trying to say, nee, wo camera se move wa. Nee, wo ek line reh thi, ye wo and all. So, you know, you learn to manage, you, man you have to manage the actors also. That's why you said that a director is also like a diplomat managing different... Yeah. <laughs> And that's where it comes from. That's where it comes yes. from. <laughs> okay. Which brings me to you, the other third thing that you do. You're also an actor. Are only in LSR, yeah. Only in LSR did I do some acting. You in Kadak? I watched you in Kadak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, um, yeah, that was for a friend. I've been in every film of his as a party guest or, you know. This is Rajat Kapoor. Online, etc. And then... Uh, 
he's always saying i want real people real people real people so this time he said no you have to act and you know i audition for it and then uh, yeah it was it was a bit difficult for me in the sense that uh uh like the first two three days I, i'm only thinking about the camera and i'm only thinking about the technical aspects of it and i'm not thinking about my own acting in the sense and i was like i used to go and stand with the with the director and the team and you know and i'm listening to them and then they all turn around and look at me and i'm like oh shit i'm on the wrong team <laughs> i'm on the team of the actors this time but i learned something i learned that uh, i learned the vulnerability of an actor you know the insecurity that an actor comes with to set and uh, i think that i've been much kinder to my actors since then i mean we shot it in 2017 this one this one <laughs> and and the friend you're talking about is rajesh kapoor yeah 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 And for those who don't know, Karak is now streaming on Sony Live. Sony Live, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a dark comedy. That's how they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I thought you were natural, Nupur. I mean, I saw you, and then I said, "Oh, this is Nupur, isn't it?" And <laughs> you were completely natural. And I mean, just the first time I've seen you on screen. Thank you. I, first time I also saw myself on screen like that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> with the lines and everything. Yeah, the single moon. So, do we have any more these questions? Should we just? Uh, Proceed. Yeah. Okay. The feminism. Most of the questions were about uh, to itself. So, no, for you've had your own struggle in Bollywood. I mean, you, 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 you don't have a background. Your family doesn't have a background in film. You basically come and you know made it on your own. I mean, to direct a film at Yash Raj, interact with Aditya Chopra, Rishi Kapoor, Aishman Khurana. I mean, these people. But I mean, it, it's a it's a great achievement. It, it, it's a great feat. So where where do you stand on this insider outsider debate? Do you think Bollywood is welcoming of new talent? Did you have it tough? I mean, it's a very tough industry because unlike other industries, it doesn't mean that if you have a degree, you'll join at an X position, and then year by year you'll get your promotion and you'll move ahead and one day become the managing director. ऐसा इस ऐसा नहीं है you know you could be struggling for 15 years and suddenly you get that big break some director some actor some producer sees something in you and you sort of and it does well and boom you're there you know like for example nawazuddin siddiqui you know i mean he did one one line roles in for so many years he founded worked in television for so many years i did television initially i did a couple of shows two three shows before i uh, kind of Yeah, so I mean, I didn't know anybody when I came in. When I came into this industry, I had absolutely no idea. I had made a list of people to assist when I came out of SCM from social my Sapaya course, and uh, Ketan was one of them. Ketan Sham Benegal, I had two, three names on my list, and uh, he was uh, starting a film, and he saw that I had just come out of Sapaya. He needed an intern. He said, "Ha, come on." But thankfully, after my internship, he said, "You can write your exams and come back. You know, there's a place for you." So then I worked with him for three and a half years. And then when I felt I was ready, I kind of wrote a film script. Uh, you know, I, I didn't write a film script right then. I mean, I wrote Happy Puri at that time because I didn't know how to raise money from making a film. See, in 1998, 99, there were no women in the industry. As an assistant, I mean, I was the only female on set, along with the hairdresser and the and the heroine. You know. so things were very different from what they are today and uh, and then you know i really believe that hard work and persistence in this industry pays yeah. you know you could be born in a big family in a filmy family so to speak but if you don't have that discipline then you won't make it you know but if you are you know you will find a way to make your film as a i'm talking about as a filmmaker now i won't talk about as an actor because i'm not an actor uh, uh uh so i think it was very hard after hippy pure hippy pure happened so easily in a sense that the first producer that i went to zarina mehta loved it said yes and within 3 months i was auditioning actors i was you know i had signed a contract and you know two years boom ba you know it was just out there in 2000 and i thought that making a film would be as easy but it wasn't because i realized that 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 see for me it was not so much about being an outsider or anything it was about being a female filmmaker you know there are studies that say that there, today there are only 7% of directors are women in the industry so i mean 7% is abysmal right it's an abysmal number of 
you know, it, it's a really sad equation when you look at it. Yeah. So, um, uh, so, you know, if there's a male filmmaker who's starting out and if there was a female filmmaker starting out, right, both are new. Both are new. The, they would trust the guy, the, fem- the male filmmaker with, with the big bucks to make the film than the female filmmaker. So that is what I was battling. I never thought about, oh, I wish I was Zoya after coming from a family with, you know, where Javed Saab and Hani Rani and, you know, I can call Rithik as my, fav- my childhood friend. See, the thing is that you are born with what you are born with. I only had my talent and my persistence and the discipline that I could put in. And so when, once you realize what your strengths are, you just go all out and you play the cards that you're dealt with. There's no yeah. time to think about other people, what their journeys are. You only fuck yourself up, you know. So, I mean, uh, so it was hard. You know, I made my first film 10 years after I made my first show. Yeah. yeah. There were many, you know, oh, a producer mila, oh, no, he backed out. Achhe, ek actor mila, no, that actress was backed out. So, as a lot of and then when I was finally ready to sort of, I, I thought in 2010, uh, 2009, sorry, I said, I'm going to throw in the towel. Maybe I'm not meant to make a film. You know, that's what I thought. And maybe it's not in my destiny to make a film. And uh, I used to get a lot of offers to be heads of programming at, eight, at uh, television pro, uh, channels, you know, like Channel B had approached me and a couple of other channels and I always said, no, yeah, you know, I want, I'm a director. I'm not going to be on the other side of the table as a programming head and stuff. And then I thought I'd throw the towel in. I said, keep us here. Oh, yeah. You know, because I, there were two films stuck with two producers for two years, one and a half years and all of that. And I was like, and then the final disappointment came. I said, forget it. The day I decided that I'm going to say yes, I, I got a call from Yashraj Films. Out of the fucking blue, you know, you're going to knock me down with a feather. Like, I'm like, how do they even know who I am? I mean, Aditya Chopra knows who I am. Like, how is that even possible? You know, I had never approached any of those film houses ever in my life. I was only, uh, you know, because my, I had this notion that they work with friends and family. Like a lot of other people do. But actually they don't, you know, they work with people from the outside constantly. Uh, if you look at their directors. And they had seen, uh, he had seen Hippie Pure and, you know, and Pam, uh, Pam, uh, Pam Auntie had liked Huba Who and, uh, you know, the person who called me who was heading YRF television, uh, took me to meet him and she was, you know, she's also an outsider, so to speak. And that was it, you know, I, uh, that's how I, Yashraj happened. I mean, so how was your first meeting with Aditya Chopra? Were, were you shaking? You know, all that I can remember was that his office was so beautiful, you know, it was on the fourth floor and there was a garden outside and I'm like, oh my God, you're so lucky you have this garden to look out at in Bombay. Uh, you? Uh, yeah, is the office also and Juhu in his... Oh, no, it's, in Anheri, it's in Anheri West. It's, where yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. the studio. It's right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, so he, look- he's a guy. He was a very cool guy. He said, you know, I want my next set of directors to come out of television and to come out of, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who are working and doing, you know, who, who are ready to take go to the next level and all of that. And that's how, you know, it happened. Yeah. Good, good. Good we didn't lo- lose you on the channel and you know, great that you could, you know, really your destiny as a director. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I mean, you said basically hard work, perseverance, persistence. So and you, you, you know, Gayatri, luck also plays a really important part because once you make something, you don't know how it's going to be received because there is no bloody formula. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. know, if Akshay Kumar is in your film, there will be some kind of opening possibly. But how, you know, even these big stars have, have had flops, right? Yeah. So nobody knows. Nobody knows what will work. So it's really, all you have to do is you have to make your film passionately about something that you believe in and just hope to God it works. You know, you, if it works, you know, the world is at your feet. If it doesn't work, So it's a cool industry in that sense. But, you know. It's not like, yeah, I don't a job, I'll apply somewhere else, I'll get it. No, you're, all, you're just as good as your last piece of work. And in a sense, it's like cricket. You know, everybody has an opinion on cricket and movies in this country. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you're as good as that last hundred that you made or that last, uh, you know, uh, if you got out on a duck, even if you're Sachin, you'll give it to you. So it's really like that, you know. 
people are quick to write you off and people are quick to put you on a pedestal unfortunately that is the way we approach our movies without any kind of uh, balance and uh, yeah yeah, so, I mean, I may be taking the conversation somewhere else, but anyway. <laughs> no, 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 I think an element of luck that you're talking of, I mean, I think what also worked for FOMO shots was that, you know, people were stuck at home and it had just happened that it released in April. I mean, and everyone was stuck at home in the middle of a pandemic. That also played some kind of a role. In- I, think so. I, I don't think so, because I think that there is so much stuff out there on uh, all the platforms combined that you will ultimately watch what you want to watch, you know. Um, and having said that, you know, in the pandemic, we couldn't meet our friends. And I think friendship is so crucial to all of us that, you know, something that was celebrating friendship was really, uh, you know, yeah. it kind of, everyone was hit with nostalgia. Uh, yeah. And personally, I saw all those the gorgeous restaurants and I was like, when can I go back to them? <laughs> A lot of the shooting happened there. Yeah, this season I was very clear that I wanted to bring Mumbai in as a character, you know, because if you're saying these women are stay in South Mumbai, I was like, let's see South Mumbai really well, you know. So, I mean, and South Mumbai never looked so glamorous before. I mean, it's like, oh my God, this is the, you know, feel of a European city. Sisters said exactly the same thing. So I'm like glad that people have noticed. <laughs> okay. So, Nupur, you have uh, Worked across the different mediums, you know, from television to film to digital. There's been a lot of uh, this new trend of mainstream Bollywood movies having, you know, a digital release. There's you now where people have been divided in different camps. What are your views? Do you think it's good for you as the director? Is it good for the audience? What are your views? Is this a way forward? See, I love going to the I think that that experience is pretty much unmatched, right? That sitting in a darkened theater, the big 35 mm screen, that hot popcorn in your lap, even though it's very expensive. But you know, that is, that experience is unmatched. It's like that Saturday weekend outing for all of us, you know, in big cities and stuff. So I think that experience vis-a-vis sitting on a laptop alone and watching something, um, yes, I mean, all of us are in the habit of doing that, but I, I personally, and I can think I can speak for all filmmakers out there that we would definitely want our film to be on the 35mm. Having said that, smaller films have greater chances of uh, finding a wider audience on mm-hmm. the streamers. Definitely, for sure. I think that, you know, all the films, all the mediums are out there for different, uh, you know, as choices. No one will reign one over the, I mean, one will not reign over the other in that sense. It's just that the, it really depends on, Acha, now, what mood are you in? You know, Mujhe mood ho hai horror dekhne ka, so there is something, there is a horror, sh- horror film to watch, you know, or something, uh, or a romantic comedy or a thriller, whatever, on demand, you know, it's there on demand. So I think that, I mean, I personally would like my film to be released in a theatre first and then come on to a streamer. But, uh, you know, I'm okay to come to the streamer yeah. as well. Yeah, because I mean, I think two days ago, even Disney announced that, you know, that film Mulan is now going to have a digital release. Yeah. And that, that's in India, in India, if you don't have a big star, if you don't have an ex, you know, the film has to recover at the box office. The economics of it is are so heavy. Mm-hmm. that uh, uh, it's much easier to get an X amount of money from a streamer and just put your film out there or to enter it or to enter into a relationship with the OTT platform right from the beginning and release your film there. So that's why I said like smaller films which don't have stars, you know, the, the OTT is a great way to go. Yeah, I, I attended a webinar with Mr. Uday Shankar the other day and he was saying, you know, just Putting them digital is going to be huge for the industry because instead of having, you know, you know, just you have uh, one Friday release once in a once per week. And there are 800 films. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you can have many more smaller stars, but I mean, obviously, the most one of the most talked about releases was obviously Dil Bechara. Yeah, the kind of, yeah, but should that have been released in a hall? why did it have a digital release so much of so many opinions so many varying opinions on that do you also have a view on it on dil bechara yeah 
should it have had a you know a ott release or maybe they should they have released it in the whole oh, release there was a lockdown yeah maybe once the lockdown was over considering it was i think it was a very smart decision on the part of the producers and the team to release it immediately because they could you know everyone was so hungry to see him and uh, you know he was yeah. Yeah. so okay. yeah. on that note we'll start taking some audience questions i can see that there's one from rakhi rakhi would you like to unmute yourself and after that anuradha yeah okay i'll try to start my video also yes please yeah hi hi nupur <laughs> good to see you yeah. and so nice to hear your uh, journey as well um i ex especially wanted to ask you i know uh, in terms of uh, what has been your most challenging um, time or aspect of your career or your journey in this industry and where do you want this industry to go to where how do you want the hindi film industry to evolve I think the most challenging part for me were those few years where I really felt like I was in the wilderness when uh, you know I was trying not to do television because I felt you know television at one point had suddenly when I did Ipipure it was in one kind of television one kind of TV programming and then suddenly it went to kitchen politics and soaps became a rage and therefore then the kind of um uh the kind of programming the channels were asking for was just something that was we couldn't relate to you know people like you and i and i stopped making i stopped directing or writing for television and so and i was trying to get my films uh you know through and i was just not being able to find that right mix of uh, material meeting material and vision meeting producer money stroke money bags you know and it takes time and like i i earlier said that you know it was that there was a time when being a female filmmaker was it was very hard you know very very hard so uh, those were very challenging years for me um uh, till i actually till i actually uh, uh you know made a made, made a show for yash raj mahibe and then made two films for them back to back so uh, and by then by 2015 or something the scenario slowly started changing with the odd platforms coming in in fact uh, when i made rommel and jugal it was in 2016 it released in 2017 when an indigenous app called old balaji was uh, you know uh, exactly mm. not with her app mm. and uh, which was one of the first shows to come on so uh, you know again then from so the scenario again changed i think where i where i would like uh, the film industry to go is that like i was saying earlier you know more and more female voices need to be heard whether it's uh, you know and so that we can get rid of this tag which says female filmmaker yeah everyone just is, filmmaker right everyone is just a filmmaker mm-hmm. so hopefully we'll get there one day you know and, mm-hmm. and uh, the thing is that opportunities have to be equal and they're still not quite there yet we're getting there but it's still not there yet thank you and i think the ott platforms have made a big difference to that because a lot of them are uh, are headed by women and i've seen mm. that more women hire women you know whether it's as a director or as a producer or as an ott platform uh, head you know mm. so which is wonderful but traditionally most film houses were headed by men and that is also slowly changing now so as that changes i th- I, i just hope that it gets a little faster it sub but but is it a conscious bias to uh, pull up more women i mean a woman director hiring a woman script writer or etc no, etc no, no, no. i'm not to hire a woman just because she's a woman it better right. be a job i mean you know so but is it because the networks are uh, wider and so you're able to see uh, other uh, film writers or uh, technicians who are women maybe the men are not seeing them technicians who editors used to be women uh writers used to be women few writers but today there are cinematographers who are women you know like both my films have been shot by a woman who also shot uh, my show hmm. and uh, but ha- there was they may have been like 0.5% earlier but today hmm. they may be 3% the changes have been made yeah yeah i remember when i was up to uh, uh, hi- when i was hiring uh, my dop for the first time even i am guilty of bias even i have internalized patriarchy so much that the first thought in my head was 
yeah, you know, I have, I want to do a handheld film, which means that the camera is going to be on the shoulder for 15 hours a day for 40 days. My first thought is, will she be able to do it? <laughs> but I was honest enough to tell her, ki, yaar, mm-hmm. na? and she said, of course, you don't need to worry. And the way she said it so confidently, you don't need to worry. She'd also mm-hmm. not shot a film before. I'd also not shot a film before. <laughs> it been an assistant to a very big DOP, Ravi Kichandra. Mm-hmm. I said, let's go with it. And the, fu- the most interesting thing is that the person who introduced us was my producer, Aditya Chopra, because I had met some five DOPs, male DOPs, did not like any of them. He said, you know, I think there's this girl who was on my sets. Uh, Neha, I think you're going to be best friends in two weeks. And I said, you know, I don't need to be friends with my DOP, best friends with my DOP. <laughs> you know, he said, just give her a shot. You're meeting so many, give her a shot. I met her. And then this, you know, we got along and, you know, whatever he said turned out to be true out of, you know, so I'm saying that the people we think the biases come from sometimes don't come from them and sometimes come from us. You know? True. Thanks. Thanks and all the best. Yeah. Anurag, would you like to ask a question now? Yes. Hello. <laughs> thank you, Gayatri, and thank you, Nupur, for this. And um, as usual, it's always wonderful to listen to you um, share your journey. And it's it's been a sense of pride for all those who know you to see you grow and become who you are. Um, um, brief question. One is, of course, um, you know, Rommel and Jugal for me has been one of those amazing um, stories that you have put out there. Um, all your productions have been great, but this is something that um, just touched me at a, at a very different level to be to have uh, dealt with that topic the way you did. Um, it was, you know, it wasn't just us. Uh, it was, it was a gay love story, but it was just so much of a love story and so much um, more than just being a gay love story. Uh, so, the, um, my question to you is that: um, is there is there a topic like this, or is there an issue like this that's close to your heart that may have not come your way as yet, and would ideally like uh, for you to be like your next big film or your next big show or something like that? Is there something that you hold close that you haven't been able to put out there? You know, you're going to be very disappointed with my answer, Anu. But thank you for saying all that you did. I, you know, you've been very close to my, you've seen my journey up close. Um, Ramil Jugal was very special. You know, people used to keep saying, kuch young karo, kuch young karo. And then this, you know, this, this came to me and it was really Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet with two boys. It was just, you know, it was just something else. Um, so now you're going to be disappointed with my answer. I am Never. trying to make an action adventure film. Ooh, that's that an interesting film. answer. Like, yeah. like I would love to make one of those Bourne films, you know, Jason Bourne films. Or yeah. would you like to have a female protagonist? You know, I would love to. I would love not like Charlie's Angels exactly. Yeah. That's done. And we, we've all enjoyed it, yeah. you know, perfect hair flying, even when you're like doing like, you know, beating the shit out of four people, yeah. that's been done. But something, something like Jason Bourne with a female Bourne, I don't know, I would have loved that. I would have loved that. Yeah. Inshallah. I, I wrote a war story, uh, which never got greenlit. So uh, I was like really upset about that. But yeah. That you know, when you talk about an film, a producer can't see you doing that. Yeah. So hopefully a couple of years, maybe a few years and I'll yeah, now, yeah. now that it's out there in the universe, it's going to get done. Yes, thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, five o'clock, we'll take just a... Nikhil, would you like to ask your question? Nikhil has dialed in all the way from London. And he has a question, question for you, Nupur. Hi, Nikhil. Hi, thank you so much for the talk. It's been really, really interesting. Um, my, my question is about uh, these digital platforms uh, and the sort of content saturation. There's so much material on demand. Um, I don't know if other people experience this, but it's I definitely get choice fatigue. So as a filmmaker, um, how do you think uh, filmmakers could, uh, or you particularly, navigate through, like breaking through um, the, the saturation of content on digital platforms? I totally get you, Nikhil. Sometimes, you know, I'll surf for half an hour trying to figure out what to watch. And then I'm like, what the hell? I can't make up my mind and I'll pick up a book. You know, I think we've all been there, right? Um, but it's a great time for us, yeah? 
you know there are all of you guys out there who are uh, waiting to watch stuff that we put out and you may not watch it in the first week or the first month or even first year that it's put out but the beauty of the ott platforms is that you can pick up my show a year later and it's still there to watch unlike a film that comes out or on television it comes out and it's gone you know after one telecast so i think that uh there may be a glut of programming but it's not going away it's not going away and there's just going to be more and more choices for you unfortunately like breakfast cereal so you'll just have to choose what you know according to the mood that you're in that day or that moment to watch this guilty pleasure But, um, of the sorry if i could just add follow up on that uh, i completely agree with you but isn't there that scare of if to use your analogy of breakfast cereal that you really don't you don't want to think about it too much and you end up just picking cornflakes or in this case friends or another tea or seinfeld consistently without really like expanding your palate i do that myself i will pick friends as well for for just you know for comfort and that's totally okay you know there are some works that have been made in the universe that are going to be there forever you know your kids are going to be watching friends as well so uh, 20 years 30 years later so it's totally okay it, it's fine it's fine yeah i think we have time for one last question from neeti and then we'll wrap up neeti yeah hi 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 neeti hello hello nupur although actually the, the thing i was going to ask you is all there i mean i i mean i was agree with anuradha saying that because i was in call didn't know you in college i had sort of gone long before you came to college but i think it's so wonderful to hear your journey and i always find something when i listen to you before it's fantastic since i've been there from the days when you were casting mouthful of sky or whatever it was my god so no i was never involved with mouthful of sky yeah little bit you were na with parvati no no paro me margarita when i was assisting uh, ketan yeah okay so now that it's so far back it's all mixed up but uh, but no you know coming from this whole discussion on women and and i know that today in corporate india there is a big push towards uh, getting more women on board and working through the issues and challenges that are out there and i think that all of us as women have a very large role to play in that and while everyone says that everybody on top is largely men and they have to be involved in this conversation and they have to push the agenda on it i think a lot of us as women if we don't do it it's not really going to change so you know the figure you gave is absolutely shocking that it's only 7% So, I mean, is there anything that is happening in an organized way that you think that, that either should be done or that you are part of that will actually encourage? And, and I'm not talking of actors that will actually encourage, uh, you know, women like you, whether directors, DOPs, other other technical spaces, to come up more in the industry. So, I think maybe all that we can do is. I mean, a of course, more women have to join some schools and communications and want to a first of all want to have the desire. They should have the desire to be a filmmaker. You know, at one point, I remember my own dad asked me, "Filmmaking for career? It's only about drugs and divorces." I started laughing. I said, "What do you mean?" You know, and then I kind of escaped to Bombay. I chose to do my mass communication in Bombay, so that you know, and I chose an India. independent filmmaker like ketan to assist so that you know he would not think you know he drugs and divorce wali duniya mein ja rahi hai you know what does it even mean i'm saying that there was a mindset earlier which which was like that today i think definitely i see many more women in the industry i mean i always make it a point to hire you know, assistants definitely you know at a at a at the next level assistant directors or in all the other departments so you know whether it's production design or costume or camera you know we i think that's all that we can do the women who are coming out of institutes we can offer them that equal opportunity on the job to work and then then it's up to them because like i said the path is not easy there is struggle involved you know you could be um very very talented but then you know the 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 uh, the way you handle people the way you uh, navigate um this you know how you are in a in a negotiation or in a meeting you know you, your degree is not good enough you know it's about you you know how you present yourself how hard you're willing to work 
you know, will people recommend you? Saying that, yeah, yeah, she worked with me. If someone calls you for a ref check, yeah, yeah, she worked with me. Do you mentor people? So, you know, I mean, as someone who has some sort of uh, power and privilege, do you mentor youngsters? So I think if all of us women do things like that, then we'll see the next, next generation of uh, women coming up. And earlier, there was no concept of uh, documentary filmmaking. You know, there were very few and far between. Today, now slowly, it's kind of gaining ground, especially with the ODT platforms. You don't know, there is so much content. You don't need to wait for a film producer only to say okay to you for a feature that would need a star. Otherwise, it cannot have a, a Friday release. But earlier, there were so many. Now, with the platforms widening, then there is more opportunity. And when there is more opportunity, there's more of the pie to go around, so to speak. And we as women can only help take along with us as many as we can. Okay. On that note, we'll uh, wrap up this conversation. Thank you, Rupur, for this very illuminating talk. It was just lovely listening to you, hearing about your journey. Thank you for telling us there's more to film drugs and divorce. <laughs> That I mean, I mean the good old-fashioned values of hard work and perseverance can be, you know, they are as important in this field as in the others. And so if there's a young girl out there who really has wants to enter the strange land of films and who has no godfather, but through hard work, perseverance, and that bit of luck, that girl can make it. So yes. thank you for the insight, Lapur, and may you really get to make that action film of yours. Waiting for it. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining in, guys. I'm so touched. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We thank you for all my guests here today, and we with another edition of Gapsha with Gayatri. Till then, muskurate rahiye, khush rahiye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.